Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. I have been receiving a lot of messages as of late to go over the user interfaces and digital gauge clusters that are now found in brand new vehicles across the automotive industry. For a lot of consumers, maybe it's your first time going to a dealership in quite a while and you're looking to trade in from your older model or maybe you're just buying your first ever new car and now you're faced with new technology and a futuristic interior and it can be intimidating using these screens and interacting with the buttons for the first time. Today we're taking a look at the 2022 Volkswagen GTI Mark 8. Now for full disclaimer, this is an SE trim so it's not an Autobahn. There will be some features that are missing, but this will be more of a general overview of what you can expect walking in to the new Mark 8 GTI. Now before we get started, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Quirk Volkswagen in Braintree, Massachusetts for letting me come down here to interact with the Mark 8 GTI and to make this video. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Volkswagen inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's check out Volkswagen's digital cockpit and also the new user interface for the Mark 8 GTI. For 2022, all Mark 8 GTIs come equipped with Volkswagen's digital cockpit, replacing the analog gauges that we were accustomed to seeing last generation. This new display offers full customizability, along with showing your navigation map if your GTI is equipped with this feature. Before we dive into the screen, we have to focus on the haptic feedback buttons that are mounted on the steering wheel. Starting on the left, you'll find your adaptive cruise controls, and by pressing on the plus and minus keys, the speed in which you selected will be shown at the bottom right of the virtual cockpit. It's also from this cluster of buttons you can activate or deactivate travel assist, but only when the car is in gear. And just as you would select your speed, you can adjust the distance in which the GTI will follow the car ahead of you to safely commute on the highway. Also on the left side of the steering wheel, you can raise and lower the volume of your favorite music by sliding your finger to the right or left. The same will apply to the tuning as well. And since these are haptic feedback buttons, there's no need to tap or press down, as a simple swipe will change the song or station you're listening to. Since we're now on the right side of the wheel, this will be home to your hands-free calling button, heated steering wheel, and all the controls necessary to change up this digital gauge cluster. By pressing on view, you can now scroll through different layouts, including a more traditional look, the navigation map, and a screen that's predominantly used for your assist settings. Back on the touchpad, the two arrow keys that go side to side will offer access to the smaller displays on the left and right of the virtual cockpit, where you can select info that's more relevant to you while driving. By pressing on the up and down keys, you have a list to choose from, and if you want a more minimal appearance, simply click on No Display. On the turn signal stock, there'll be a button conveniently placed within the reach of your thumb. Here you can activate or deactivate assist systems, such as lane assist, adaptive cruise control, side assist, rear traffic alert, and front assist. But we recommend keeping these safety systems on for better peace of mind. You can also access these settings from the head unit as well. Moving on to Volkswagen's MIB3 user interface, there's a number of embedded features and settings that will aid and amplify your experience behind the wheel and on the road. If your GTI is equipped with onboard navigation, and this will be your primary source of getting directions rather than Google Maps and Waze, you'll have the ability to customize the route guidance where you can avoid toll roads or highways. But more importantly, if you're handing the keys to the young driver in the family, road signs can be displayed on the map, along with the car notifying you if you're speeding. As with most navigation systems, you can quickly find points of interest such as gas stations and rest areas, but this can be done through voice commands rather than manually typing on the touchscreen. As we saw with the Mark 7, this head unit will be home to the vehicle settings, but unlike in the past, there's some additional tabs that make their way to this menu, including the start-stop function, which used to be placed next to the shift knob. By pressing on the vehicle tab, here you can adjust exterior light duration after entering or exiting a vehicle, turning on the ability for the side mirrors to lower when reversing, 
and one neat feature is the convenience turn signals, which will activate and blink three times when gently pulling on the stock. This is best used when changing lanes on the highway. By swiping right or left on the status screen, you'll be sent to different angles of the car, all of which have setting tabs, allowing you to turn on or off the electronic stability control, and it's here where you can have the GTI unlock as you approach the vehicle, and also unlock all doors when using the key fob or just the driver's side. Best of all, if you've owned a Volkswagen in the past, from this menu, the windshield wipers can be put into service position with the press of a button. So if they need to be replaced or the GTI will be outside during a snowstorm, you no longer have to manually go through the procedure that older GTI owners know by heart. Seen last generation, fuel economy data can be showcased so you have a better idea of the efficiency of the GTI on road trips. With Volkswagen limiting button clutter, all the climate controls will now be found on the touchscreen including the AC, fan speed, and direction, and the heated and ventilated seats if equipped on your GTI. You'll notice on the dashboard the haptic feedback buttons mounted just beneath the screen. And just like with the volume and tuning, slide your finger right or left to lower or raise the temperature. As you saw for Volkswagen's digital cockpit, you can access your assist settings from this user interface as well. But instead of simply activating or deactivating safety systems, you can personalize the aggressiveness of the warnings. So if you want the assist functions to be passive but not turned off, this is where you'll go to adjust them. For lane assist, you can also have the steering wheel vibrate to notify you if you're drifting out of your lane. Despite the simplistic interior layout, there'll be five buttons mounted beneath the touchscreen on the dashboard. The drive mode selector, climb controls, park assist functions, driver assistance systems, and hazards. Since our GTI in this video is an SE, we don't have Volkswagen's dynamic chassis control, which affects ride quality. However, through individual mode, you can personalize your driving experience to your liking. So if you want tighter steering, but prefer the drivetrain to be in comfort, you can have the best of both worlds. As with most new cars today, you can just select Sport, Comfort, or Eco if you don't have a specific preference when traveling or commuting. Of course, you have a rear backup camera with trajectory with front and rear parking sensors. It's from this screen where you can turn off maneuver braking and rear traffic alert. But again, it's best to keep these safety systems activated. Since Volkswagen's MIB3 user interface is far more in depth than prior generations, as this video has proven, there will be a help icon and by clicking on this icon, you're led to a user manual where you can learn more about the functions of this touchscreen. And best of all, it's in a step-by-step -step format so you can get accustomed to and familiar with this head unit and all the features it comes equipped with, such as voice commands or even gesture control. And speaking of gesture control, you can simply wave right or left so you don't have to reach for the touchscreen when driving. The remaining features such as ambient lighting, sound, and general settings, and of course the radio, are very straightforward and don't require a learning curve. For sound, you can adjust the bass, mid, and treble levels at any time, while also making hand gesture controls and icons on the screen audible, which we found to provide more feedback during our time with this GTI. For ambient lighting, there's different moods that will light up the screen and digital gauge cluster with the color you have selected. And you can also use multiple colors if you so desire. The system settings tab is where you change the time and date, language, units of measurement, and restore to factory settings, which this menu was present on last generation's GTI as well. As we wrap up, we hope you've learned a bit more about your new Mark A GTI. Now that we've gone over everything, it's time to put this hatchback into drive and hit the open road. So in closing, I hope you enjoyed this general walkthrough for Volkswagen's digital cockpit and the user interface for the Mark A GTI. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos like this one. But more importantly, let me know what vehicles you want to see featured on the channel so that way we can take a deeper dive into the user interfaces and digital gauge clusters so you're ready to hit the open road the minute you hand the keys 
and ready for your first ever drive behind the wheel of your new car. And I will see you guys next time.